Good morning. My name is Austin Mills, and I'm pleased to bring you my presentation, King of a One Horse Town. You see, when it comes to podcasting, I feel like we all have a lot of golden ideas up in our noggins, and we should act on them, even if we're doing it alone. I'm the creator and producer of the comedy podcast, Raining from Rushmore, where I tell all about those crazy American gods and goddesses intervening throughout history. Discovering the identity of this podcast has been an extremely revelatory experience for me. When I began listening to podcasts, I realized there was a lot of the same stuff out there. Uh, a lot of crew crime, a lot of blah blah chit chatting. So I wanted to make something far down into the long tail. Something way off in the green. Something so ridiculous that when you tell your friends, they respond with, what? So this led me to the appreciation of the rabbit hole. Have you ever noticed how like hobbies just go on forever? The more and more you go into it, the further you can go. It never ends and you can always discover more. So I wanted to make a world that had no limits. To put it bluntly, I wanted to kind of be the one who pushed Alice down the rabbit hole. I wanted to help her find her own wonderland. Because, you know, as a wise person once said it, madness and creativity aren't that far apart. They're next door neighbors, in fact. And if you work with one, then you can find that gravity does the rest. With that, I started Amelia Earhart. The idea started to become an idea slowly as I added more details. Other than that, it was just an ugly outline. But with that, I thought this was way too much of my inner thoughts to be appreciated by anyone. But the MVP moment was obviously Samuel L. Jackson and his soundbite from Peter and the Wolf. Everyone seemed to like it, and though the writing was extremely important, I realized there was a gratuitous space for me to create a specific sound for my podcast. I needed to make the sound sound in such a way that the music and the effects would be as iconic, if not more iconic, than the stories themselves. Thus, music was the key to making the podcast something more than a narrative and something different than an audio drama. Once again, moving deeper into the long tail. Music would be the bridge that took the podcast and made it something as close to a TV show or movie as possible. You see, most of my creative inspiration comes from movies and TV show creators like John Hughes. He is the director of many unforgettable films with untouchable soundtracks. In fact, when making a film, Hughes would tell the actors what song he would play before filming that scene. Obviously, he understood music's power to put characters and audiences into the narrative. Thus, for my podcast to find its sound, the music had to uproot my audience and replant them in the time period. But the element of comedy would continually remind them that they didn't belong there. These additional ideas came from cartoons. Looney Tunes had its amazing merry melodies where the, all of the settings and ideas match the actions. Looney Tunes is followed by, you know, Jungle Book, which has its really cool jazz roots, SpongeBob with its surfer rock. These were all a thumbprint of identity. And these helped to show them that as you make associations across media, your project becomes forever intertwined with the sound you use. So it was while recording the second episode of Joseph McCarthy, the material I realized was very mediocre and needed some more absurdity, needed more details, needed more power, it needed to be extra. It couldn't simply match the first episode, it had to dig deeper. It was time for another level up. So you can see that what I've made it needed to catch a glimpse of something more grandeur. If you're not surprised by your content, your audience won't be surprised. If you're indifferent, your audience will be indifferent. So the first step was creating a visual for the listeners. The further the speech reached into the real world, the funnier it would become. Therefore, I needed to help the audience catch a glimpse of the content. They needed to see the world they were listening to. That's where the cover art came from. The next up was voices. Dave Chappelle kills me, but the true idol is Mel Blanc. He did every single voice on Looney Tunes, and undoubtedly his voices were just as funny as the show themselves. So I needed to make something more than just a simple voice alter. I had to create voices and characters that were recognizable. But then when it came right down to the brass monkey, I never really knew what I was doing. To this moment, I attribute any positive achievement to ignorance. Podcasting isn't about beginner's luck or chance. Just because it's a urinal, it doesn't mean it's not art. Just ask Marcel Duchamp. That's the main lesson I learned from this experience. The need to take risks. That is the beauty of podcasting. Since it's free, we can all make something that will potentially set humanity back a couple decades, but who knows, people might love it. Take the chance to change people's preferences. And thus, from mythology, I learned it's a wacky world out there, and I believe the, the reason mythology has lasted so long is because it shows people's errors. People love errors, and that's the lesson of today is that successful podcasting comes from successful heirs.